Hello again, I'm Dustin Kirkland, a product manager at Google, and I'm here with one of my colleagues, David Oppenheimer. He's a software engineer working on multi-tenancy in Kubernetes at Google. David, I've got a couple of questions for you about multi-tenancy in Kubernetes. I was at KubeCon a year ago in Berlin, and multi-tenancy was quite the topic. What have you heard over the last year in terms of customer and user demands around multi-tenancy in Kubernetes? Yeah, so uh, a year ago, um, it was uh, very popular for people to just run lots of clusters if they had uh, different users who or applications who they wanted to isolate from one another. And over the last year, uh, we've either introduced or brought to a greater level of maturity, like beta or GA, a bunch of features in open source Kubernetes that enable multi-tenancy within a cluster. Within a single cluster. So that's a big change because I've seen this as well. Every team, every department gets their own Kubernetes cluster. They're completely separate, separate management planes. So you're saying that as of Kubernetes 1.10 now, I should be able to run multi-tenant multiple tenants in a single cluster? Yeah, that's right. So like some of the features that we have that are that are mature now are um, the, the most uh, uh, well-known one is uh, RBAC for authorization. So you can put very fine-grained controls over which users or groups of users or applications can uh, create and update and delete which API resources uh, on the API server. Um, and so that kind of gives you control plane isolation. And then we also have uh, other features that uh, provide isolation on the node or at the container level. For example, uh, we have pod security policy, which says, let's an administrator say, for example, no privileged containers in this cluster or in this namespace, or um, uh, you can't run any containers as root in this in this namespace, or, or, or these these users can't, can't do that. Um, so it gives you a uh, pretty fine-grained control over what privileges uh, uh, containers running in the cluster have. And then another uh, policy that's kind of at the node level uh, is network policy, which uh, controls which pods can communicate with which other pods uh, so that you can, for example, um, isolate namespaces from one another or say that you have like part of your application in one namespace and part of your application in another namespace and the pods that constitute that application should be able to talk to each other across that namespace boundary but not with other namespaces in the cluster. And so you can kind of partition your uh, cluster based on the groups of users and the applications and the uh, topology of the application uh, using, uh, using network policy. So, uh, between uh, those three features, the RBAC and the network policy and the pod security policy, uh, we've uh, kind of met a lot of the needs that people have uh, for multi-tenancy for running like enterprises or software as a service where you want to provide isolation uh, between uh, untrusted users uh, sharing a cluster. So now it's realistic for Coke and Pepsi as separate tenants to run in the same in the same cluster. That that feels reasonable at this point. Well, so Coke and Pepsi is kind of going to one extreme of the spectrum, and so. Um, one of the things that people have asked a lot about, and actually there's been uh, just very recent technology developed around solving that problem, is kind of a hypervisor level of um, isolation between containers. So when I was talking about like pod security policy and network policy earlier, um, those are kind of based on uh, uh, the, the container isolation in Docker or whatever runtime you're using, and also uh, what your network provider can provide for the network policy. But it doesn't give you the, uh, you still have a share multiple containers on a node are still sharing the same uh, uh, kernel. And so if you want uh, the level of protection that you need, say, for Coke and Pepsi, then uh, you should use uh, something like Gvisor, which was uh, announced today, uh, or yesterday, I guess, at, uh, from Google, which allows you to um, have kind of the hypervisor level of security and isolation between containers uh, uh, that are sharing a cluster. And so I think that for the Coke and Pepsi use case, now it's available. Now it's it's possible to do that, but that's a very recent development. Uh, that's great. And uh, in terms of what's coming next, can you give us maybe a, a brief taste of where the where multi clusters and multi tenancy is headed in uh, in Kubernetes? Sure. There's kind of two areas where there's ongoing work uh, for multi tenancy. One of them is related to policies, so uh, making it easier for people to uh, specify these policies. So today you kind of have to be a bit of an expert in Kubernetes in order to know uh, how to set up the multi tenancy policies in a multi tenant cluster. So. Uh, some of the work that's going on is kind of towards unifying and making it simpler to specify uh, the, the different policies. And then um, we also have work um, uh, that are kind of not, not related to, uh, to policies, um, but more related to isolation. So for example, improving 
the uh, isolation between tenants in the control plane. So, for example, different users can't DOS each other by um, overloading the scheduler, overloading the API server. Uh, so giving the controllers and the other components of the Kubernetes control plane some notion of how much of the control plane resources each tenant is using uh, so that uh, it can kind of fairly share the resources across those tenants or at least prevent them from DOSing each other and, each, and, and ensure that uh, all the tenants can make progress even if one of them is trying to impose a lot of load on the scheduler or the API server or some other uh, piece of the control plane. So that's one of the, one of the uh, uh, key things that we're working on now uh, to improving the multi-tenancy story. Yeah, it's super impressive how far we've come in a year and I'm really looking forward to where we're going next. David, thank you. Yeah, it's great talking to you. Yeah, thanks. thanks.